we're gonna do something crazy. We're gonna go to the top end, <clears throat> and we're gonna cry. Uh, oh wow, we are gonna cry. Oh no, I regret everything. <laughs> the time attacks out the ass. Oh. Sure. <laughs> I haven't really done much in this discipline, and the ones I did was just like, oh my god, this is way too fast. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah. I never really got into, like... So yeah, Obituary came late. Evile came pretty late. There's a pretty good fresh metal band I saw supporting Anthrax at Hammerfest. They were straight up, straight before them. Called Diamond Plate. I think they've split up now, but some sick stuff from them. Real big up and comers. It's sad to see that I don't I haven't seen them around since. And it really got me back into thrash. And then I saw the Big Four live, and that was just fucking epic. I mean, that was great. That was the first day one time I was a download or solid. I think it was Sonosphere, and I was like, that's what that's the what I was talking about before. The the the, like, back and forth between Sonosphere and Download over who will be the big, the big guy in the UK. They were like, fine, we'll get Metallica. And they were like, oh, you got Metallica. We got the big fucking four. <laughs> just like, it was just getting absurd after a while. It was like, oh, I did a flip. <laughs> Didn't even notice I was flying for a bit there. So, calm it down, calm it down. <clears throat> so, yeah, it was Anthrax, Slayer, Megadeth, Metallica, and like Diamond Head were the support, and then they all came up on stage and did uh, Am I Evil together. And it was just like, it was around that era, like, before Sonosphere got cancelled uh, on the year that they got cancelled, it was Queen with Adam Lambert, Kiss, and I can't remember who the other band was. Was it Slipknot again? I think it was Slipknot again or something like that. And I was like, really? Again? And they were like, yeah, but it's fun. And then it, they didn't sell enough tickets because uh, for some reason that lineup was just not, you know, the, I guess there just wasn't like real big metal band that was like metal metal. Kiss is arena rock, Queen is like classic rock kind of thing. And I, I think that turned a lot of people off. But they were straight up for just second stage shenanigans, so they had something over the other, like, guys. They had Skid Row booked and Sebastian back saying, I'm going to come up on stage and we're going to reunite classic lineup Skid Row in front of everyone at Sonosphere Nebworth. And, like, you know, we were basically going to make history, and that never happened purely because... Sonosphere kicked off and went, oh yeah, like we can't do it, I'm sorry. They're thinking, like, we could have ended up in a universe where classic lineup Skid Row is still playing to this day because they realized that they missed it or something. And they were getting, like, all sorts, like I was saying before. Like, um, the first time I went to Son Sonosphere, they had Thunder's last ever show. And then obviously a year later, Thunder said, this will be our last ever tour, actually, this one. And then at High Voltage, they were like, this is Thunder's last ever show. And then I'm pretty sure I saw several things afterwards that they were supporting White Snake and Journey, saying it was their last ever show for like the fifth year running. <laughs> Thunder are sick. Love Walked In is a great ballad, and Dirty Love is a great fucking song with a great singable chorus. It is a crime that nobody has listened to Thunder and they're not as big as... Um, other bands of that thing. I think they're better than Saxon. No offense, Saxon fans. I like Saxon, but Thunder are sick, and they get nothing. They get less than Bruce Tattoo, for fuck's sake, or Danko Jones, and you're like, come on, man. Danko Jones and Bruce Tattoo are sick, but, like, you're thinking, come on, man. They did, uh, Give Me All Your Loving, didn't they? No, not, not that one. They, um... Oh... Oh, it go? So glad you made it. That one. 
Give me some more loving. Give me some loving. That one. That was them. And everyone's like, who the fuck's Fonda? It's like, Fonda a Cirque. Why? I'm just crashing everywhere because I'm screaming about how wonderful Fonda are. <laughs> it's all going wrong. No, I've killed everyone and I'm last. Uh, saw Judas Priest live at High Voltage in Victoria Park, London. There was Slash there with Miles Kennedy. Black Country Communion played. Finn Lizzy played with Scott Gorham and a few other guys from like the more earlier lineups. Uh, Black Label Society, Heaven and Hell. Was it Heaven and Hell were there? No, Heaven and Hell were gonna be there, but Dio died, so they just did a tribute to him. Uh, Gary Moore was there, I think. Asia may have been there, Jeffrey Toll was, Barkley James Harvest was, some really sick stuff, Anathema, Curved Air, a lot of sick prog and metal and rock, uh, like all sorts. Volbeat were good when I saw them live too. I can just talk about this all fucking day. It's sick, I'm dying though in this, but look at this shit, I'm like 14. Surprised I'm not last, perhaps some people die. Look at that penalty time. Oh wait, that's a split time, but it's still not great. Try and stay on the track and maybe that would help. Black Label Society. They kind of came late into my frame of mind. Frame of mind, and it's not because they weren't good from the beginning. I listened to Stillborn, I listened to Fire It Up, and I was like, this shit is sick. And I just couldn't find any CDs for some reason. Like, in the UK, I just couldn't find any CDs in HMV or anywhere I looked. And suddenly they started coming through, and it was like, Scullage came out. And I was like, yeah, Scullage has fired up on it, I'll buy that. And then I saw, like, another Greatest Hits compilation, the black one with the silhouette of the devil on it. I forget what it's called. Oh, motherfucker. I'm just staying 14th for this. Uh, and then I ended up getting, uh, not Blackened, whatever that one was called, the one with the Mar Marion. I got Concrete Jungle off of a pirating site, because it was literally like I couldn't find it anywhere, and I, I for some reason kept forgetting to buy them on... There was a period of time on iTunes where there was a lot of stuff missing, and it felt really targeted, like, it's Coldplay! Here's you two and the killers! And it was like, okay. And it took them forever to get ACDC. It took them forever to get, like, a load of rock and metal bands. Like, you're like, fuck you, this is a staple. But then it got to the point where they had all that stuff, and it was surprisingly cheap because they kept devaluing it. So I could buy entire obituary back catalogues for, like, five pounds. Or it was like, two pounds per classic Anthrax album or something on iTunes for a bit. So I had Spreading the Disease, already had Among the Living on CD by this point. I bought a load of stuff like um, Sounds of White Noise and stuff like that. Anthrax just hit me like a fucking train, because I saw them with John Bush live. And um, that was at Sonosphere, and that's the first time I heard Antisocial ever. This is the first time I heard a lot of their stuff, and I was like, the fuck, man, these are great. These are great, where have these been my whole life? Caught in the marsh, all of that stuff, and I was just like, this is sick. Uh, and a lot of people are like, oh, Anthrax, really? And I'm like, you see them live, and you tell me, really? They are fucking awesome, and if you don't think that, you haven't seen them live. They know how to get a pe bunch of people up and jump in. Madhouse and I Am The Law and Indians and or War Dance. Um, all of that stuff just gets people going nuts. I think they do it a lot better. Like, they're focusing more on the crowd. Like, Metallica and Megadeth are a little more, like... It's a show, and they're standing there, and they're like, look at my guitar skills. Slayer are big about the look at the blood. 
Look at the death and the Nazis. And there's all of this shit everywhere on this, on this stage and there's like explosions and they're just playing and everyone's just going nuts because it's Slayer and the Slayer fans are rabid as fuck. But it's really still a great show. Anthrax are looking to get the crowd. Like they're like, yeah, come on guys. And they're like whipping you up still. And they've still got that a lot more. It feels like Metallica are a bit like, yeah, we know you're going to be doing that anyway. <laughs> like, you know, like it feels like they're just really comfortable with the idea. People come to Metallica and they go nuts. Like it's effortless now. They pay their ticket, they're going to go nuts. <laughs> like, you know, like I said, Bon Jovi, never saw them live. They're too expensive. And it says a lot when like, these bands that I would consider have bigger, more versatile, and more sturdy back catalogs, and like, you know, probably stood the test of time a little bit better. I mean, you could go see Kiss for cheaper. I think the White Snake, I wanted to see this tour. It was Journey, uh, White Snake, I think Def Leppard and Thunder, like I mentioned before, and they were touring the UK, and I was like, that's sick. And it's like Bon Jovi was more expensive on their own <laughs> without like that lineup. And you're like, the hell, man. <clears throat> anyway, less about live, more about just stuff. Uh, Obituary are a sick band. And if you haven't listened to them, you need to listen to them. Uh, some of my favorites are songs like Chopped in Half. That's a pretty standard one on circulation with me. But, like, pretty much the entire Inked in Blood album, an album that, like, passed a lot of people by, has got some real sick shit, like Pain Inside, uh, what the fuck was the other shit that I was listening to on that day? Jeez, it's just all gone out of my head, I need to re-listen to that album before I recommend shit to people, maybe it's better. Oh! No! <laughs> I need to stop talking, but I don't want to. Lamb of God and Machine Head came real late for me. Oh, I saw Down live, and then I really got into Down for a big while. It became very hard to like Phil Anselmo after a while, because it kept being a lot of racism problems, and you're like, hey man, I just listen to the music, and then once you drive that home, and you come to that conclusion, you suddenly go, you know what, I'm just going to listen to Furs and fuck it. Like, you know, if I can listen to Phil Anselmo even after all of this stuff's happened, I can listen to Burzum. I know it's not exactly the same. Burzum's like, the guy who is in Burzum, the guy who runs Burzum is a fucking genuine racist, psychotic guy who stabbed people, is a murderer in many cases, and has burned down a bunch of churches, and there's a load of confirmed crimes and shit he's done. Whereas Phil Anselmo got up on stage drunk a few times and went white power. It's a little bit different, but like the problem is he's kind of, everyone's like, oh man, we don't want to work with Phil Anselmo anymore. Cause yeah, it's like, come on, man. He's still like, you know, okay, you got to pay attention to this shit. I don't condone it. <clears throat> but sometimes the musical artist is an asshole or just not a good person. And you just gotta kinda look by that, cause otherwise Morrissey won't have a fucking career anymore, you know what I mean? It's funny how there's some people who are cunts, are famous cunts, and everyone just goes, yeah, that's fine. And then it's like, this guy turns out to be kinda racist, and you're like, yeah, Michael Jackson touched kids. <laughs> like, you know, John Lennon hit his wife. Oh no, <laughs> like, yeah, those things suck. But, you know, I don't refuse letters from the mailman because it turned out later he's a fucking, like, racist. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's very hard. Like, I understand. Like, for example, like, reason that I didn't like Lost Prophets was because I just didn't like their music. <laughs> and then that came out and I was like, well, glad I didn't like them. So I guess it's, like, kind of, hypocritical it's very hard if you like the music and you're like this shit's heavy and then it's like oh the guys are twat though you're like shit's still heavy though <laughs> you know ah i can't do this can i i'm too dumb you 
You know, it doesn't change the fact that the shit's heavy. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, I really like Trivium. That was another band that I like. They, they haven't done anything wrong, as far as I know. I read a hilarious story about Trivium in their early era. I think this was actually before Shogun came out that I read this interview. And they were to they asked, do you ever do anything with groupies? And they, Matt Heafy candidly said, we did this once. And then recounted a story where he said, they had a groupie come in to their tour bus and they were like all like sleeping with her and stuff. And he said, it was just cringy and awkward afterwards though, you know? Flying all over here. He said, because then they think that they're best friends with the band because he fucked them. And he's like, we did all this shit and we were like getting with her and we were like laughing about it afterwards and we're like, and then we just felt really bad afterwards. And I was like, oh, that's such a nice guy thing to say. What the hell? Not like a fake nice guy thing. It's like a, you know, like he actually, like, you know, in a place where he could probably get like a bunch of people groupies because like trivium you know they're a fairly big band and he's not bad looking he's just like nah it feels weird i don't like <laughs> very strange man but like um <clears throat> that was interesting to read that because it was paired next to a kerrang interview with uh around the same time of ben sinfold saying oh yeah we fuck bitches all the time and they were really trying to make out they were something special and the lead singer of him going Oh, I'm too good to masturbate. I've never masturbated in my life. <laughs> I was like, really? He was like, yes, I don't waste my seed. <laughs> he wrote in the, like this, the, this interview and I was like, what a pretentious douche. And to this day, I've never listened to him. <laughs> never listened to Bring Me the Horizon because I read one Kerrang interview. And the Kerrang interview was him washing his tattoos off going, I'm washing away my sins. And I was like, <laughs> you know, of course you are, you ketamine addicted piece of shit. <laughs> you know. And like, people I knew were fans of Bring Me the Horizon and they were like, oh, he's just so misunderstood. You just don't get him. And like, they went and saw him live and allegedly he just stood by the edge of like the stage the whole time looking strung out as fuck and sad. And they were like, Oh, such a misunderstood artist. It's like, he's strung out on ketamine, you fucking idiot. <laughs> like, most of them just do their jobs anyway. <laughs> you know? Like, got fucking Judas Priest lead singers getting in, getting in a motorbike crash, then driving the motorbike on stage and still hitting the hard high notes, even with all of his ribs broken. And this little bitch in his little slam vest sitting in the corner going, uh, I get not any ketamine for the past ten days. And you're like, Way to make me hate your band. To this day, barely listen to them. Don't even know if they're bad. I think I listened to Chelsea Grin a few times because it came up on a show, you know? Like it came up on radio or a Spotify playlist, and I was like, oh, this is okay. Who is it? Oh, it's Bring Me the Horizon. Fuck this then. And it's like, fastest way to piss me off is by being pretentious. It doesn't even matter if your music's good anymore. If I read that you're a pretentious dick, in an interview, it ruins that person for me. And it ruins their band. And it ruins their music. And I just go, never listening to their shit ever again. If I was. But like, at the same time nowadays, I've kind of, nowadays it wouldn't bother me, as previously said about like, um, Phil and his situation. And uh, like, but I listen to Burzum and sorts of shit now and I'm just like, uh, who gives a fuck? I don't care. I'm gonna hear for the music. Probably wouldn't see them live. Oh, I'd see Phil on Selma live. I've seen him live loads of times. I saw him at a Dessel in Belgium at Graspop, uh, doing with the illegals, he was doing some uh, Pantera covers. And uh yeah that was well covers, is it really covers if it's him? Uh and I was like, you know what, I don't give a fuck, that's fun. <laughs> you know? So I kind of like, you know, starting to question who I am as a person the more I think about this. Yeah. Not a racist. Am I supporting racist musicians? Fuck. Damn it. Hey, if you listen to Megadeth, you're already pretty much there. Like, 
Dave Mustaine's not a racist, he's just a fucking lunatic. <laughs> he's like, he literally, I saw him live in New Zealand, and before Trump got voted in, he was like, if Clinton gets in, I'm moving to New Zealand. And I was like, oh yeah, how's that working out for you now, Mustaine? <laughs> like, how's that working out? Idiot. <laughs> yeah, because Trump's so great, isn't he? That's what everyone says about Trump. That he's a great guy and nothing ever wrong has happened during his presidency. Don't know if Clinton would be better, and we will never know. But, like, the most ridiculously political lunatic bastard of the kind of bands where it's like, it's not even that political. I mean, Rust in Peace has a lot of anti-nuke efforts and stuff in it, but it's like... Not oh, supposed to be. But it's a bit like a lot of his stuff is just paranoid lunacy and him just going, yeah, and just being really weird. And I, you know, like uh, I've always felt like Mustaine's one of these guys where he's like, great musician, great songs, total idiot. <laughs> like, total idiot. And it's like, yeah. It's just proof that it doesn't have anything to do with it, and that really helped me. But when you're younger, and you're reading these uh, articles, and these people are coming across, like... Because Kerrang! seem to deliberately write people so that they appear to be fucking twats. <laughs> you're just like, I don't want to listen to this guy's music anymore. He sounds like an asshat. It's like it's anti... like these bands. Uh, like... Straight up, I didn't ever listen to uh, Inex, no, not Inexcess. Mindless Self Indulgence, purely because, like, I can't even remember what the quote was, but like on the front of Kerrang, Jimmy Euron was there saying something fucking stupid, and it just made me immediately go, "Fuck this band." Same with the Killers; they were on the front of is it GQ or Empire or Rolling Stone or something like that. And I just saw the front and them go, we're bigger than Queen. And we're going to always be bigger than Queen. And I was just like, well, I'm never listening to Killers again, fucking cunts. <laughs> like, you know, and I don't know why that triggered me so much, but I was just like, you're not Queen. <laughs> I'm not even a huge Queen fan. But I was just like, no. You're not queen. <laughs> like, you know, and it just pissed me off forever. And I don't know why. <laughs> like, just, you're not queen. It's like when I read an interview from Empire magazine, and it was like Goblet of Fire era Daniel Radcliffe, and he was caught saying something in an interview. And he was like 15 or something at the time, so he's going to say something stupid. He said something like, they said, What do you think will happen if the guy who plays Voldemort screws up? And he's like, Oh, I don't think they'll give a shit, because everyone's coming there for me anyway. And that just made me hate Daniel Radcliffe for, like, five years straight. So I stopped reading these magazines in the end, because it just made me hate everybody. I was like, God, what a pretentious fuck. And it's like, then you realize it's the journalist. The journalist is spinning the words to try and make them sound like assholes, because people misspeak and say stupid shit that can be construed in a really dumb way. So, uh, yeah, I just stopped buying them, just listening to the music and forgetting about it. But anyway, enough of bullshit from me about this. I'm actually winning. Oh, 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 oh. Uh... I was recommending a load of albums to my mate recently because I was like, these are the albums I've been listening to the most recently. And it was like, oh, what the fuck was it? Uh, Cattle Decapitation Death Atlas. That is a really good album. Pretty sick. I didn't listen to Cattle Decap until recently. I've been going through this stuff and I'm like, this is sick. My favorite album of the past couple of years, I just, out of nowhere, started listening to Death. And I was just like, how? Another band where you're just like, how is no one listening to Death? How is Death just off of everyone's list? How is, how is it not like one of the legendary metal bands? On people who know, know. But like, Sounds of Perseverance... The Sound of Perseverance has been on my top album list for the past few years now, and it's always in rotation. 
It's that heart work by Carcass. I mean, in in and out the Vanitas album by um, Anna Mafrak. I mean, we're just talking heavy shit here, or heavy as shit. Um, uh, some Arch Enemy occasionally. Uh, who else? Just really smash. No, oh, I'm gonna get up the list I sent him. Fuck it. <laughs> well, there's loads. Uh, where did I put it? Oh yeah, I listen like the most recent albums. Uh, well, actually, this is an old album of theirs, but like <clears throat> I went back and re-listened to recently Behemoth's uh, album, The Satanist, and that is just a fucking sick album. Oh father, oh Satan, oh son. Was Bart Sabell on that one? I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, that album though is just filled with amazing tracks. Kind of disappointed by them live last time I saw them at Grass Pop. It just wasn't great for me. Uh, always liked uh, the one with Of Fire and the Void and that last Lord is Upon Me on it. Is it Evangelion? No. <laughs> that's that's um, anime. It's, it's white with like black inscriptions on the front of like a deity of some kind. Which is not really... But that's a sick album. Of Fire and the Void and... Um, got a load of good stuff on there. Uh, Crowbar of Fellows Rest is a really good album. Uh, yeah, pretty sick. You should all go listen to that. Uh, Death Angel's Humanicide has just got some sick stuff on it. Uh, the opening track is awesome. Uh, what is that called? It starts with a sick opening though. Um, Dark Horse. This is who I am. Despite what you believe, a formless figure from the depths, destroy of all I see, that one. And uh, it also says it has I Came For Blood, which is a really sick album, uh, song. I came for blood. It's my desire. I will get what I need. It's like awesome. Um, uh, Late Slipknot, I've actually been really enjoying it. It's been a bit of a return to form, in my opinion, to Slipknot. Uh... A return to a form it's not exactly like it's their classic stuff but I didn't really care for the devil in I album all out life was a good return for me that's pretty sick there's a lot of good tracks that really tear you a new one on the new album it's pretty good um, unsainted is fine it's fine like, a lot of people are like, oh, it's a bit weak. It's like, yeah, it sounds more like Stone Sour, but, like, sometimes I like to actually hear Corey Taylor because he's actually an accomplished singer as well. He's not just someone who... But, like, so many good albums on that. Uh, we Are Not Your Kind. That was the album title. Uh, Crowbar, Old Fellows Rest, I've mentioned. That's really sick. Everyone should go listen to that. Uh, I saw them live. They're really good. Uh, Immolation I saw live recently, oh, yeah, last year now, wouldn't it have been because of the COVIDs. Um, uh, they got a few good albums and a few great songs, When the Jackals Come and all of that stuff. But, like, if I was going to recommend anything that I've been listening to the most recently, it would be Failures for Gods, that album. It's really good for me. Uh, I really like it. Uh, who else? Thy Art is Murder, Dear Desolation is a great album. I really enjoyed it. Ah, uh, what else should I recommend? I mentioned Obituary a few times, but I haven't really listened to their more new stuff. The most recent was Inked in Blood is in the full album. I only listened to singles since then. I need to get back in. Uh, the, the, what else was on the list? Uh, fucking hell. Can't do it now. I'm driving. <laughs> I always forget one. Like I mentioned, Behemoth. Oh, Testament, The Ritual has been in and out of my playlist re fairly regularly for the past five years. Just that album is just amazing. <laughs> like, I love that album. Return to Serenity and all of that. It's a great album. Uh, kind of fell out with Anthrax after the song with the zombie fighting song on it. Uh, Fight them until you can't. 
after that I stopped listening to Anthrax. Just, eh, just didn't feel like it anymore. Don't know why. Slayer Seasons in the Abyss album has been played a lot recently because that's just got like everyone goes on about Rain in Blood. It's a great album. I've played it a lot. <laughs> And Seasons in the Abyss and South of Heaven just didn't really get as much playtime because of it. And I'm finally going around after, like, and listening to it a lot more than I used to. And, you know, obviously I used to listen to it a bit, but it's like I was, like I said, I was kind of always more Metallica, Megadeth, never really big into Slayer. And then I was just like, fuck it, Slayer. And that album for me is my favorite. I'd say my personal favorite is uh, Seasons in the Abyss. Weird choice, maybe, for some, but... Title track, Dead Skin Mask. Dance with the dirt on my dreams. <laughs> yeah, I love that shit. Uh, recently listening to Lamb of God, I fell out with Lamb of God in a big way at some point, and I don't even really remember. Just all my mates going, Fuck Lamb of God, I hate Lamb of God, and I was like... I agree, because I'm an idiot, and I don't want to form an opinion. So I, then I went and listened to them, and was like, Walk With Me In Hell is sick. Ruin is sick. Ashes of the Wake album is sick. Pretty much every album they made has got some sick shit on it. About three years ago, I was listening to Machine Head. And I was like, oh, these are pretty good. I wonder what happens to them, man. I haven't really seen anything from them since. And I'm like, oh. And then I heard Phil Demo's, uh, they're starting up Demolition again. Is it Demolition? Fuck, I can't remember this fresh metal band's name. The classic one. Yeah, I win. <clears throat> um, big other metal bands to be fair death as well human really recently was just listening to that album i like spiritual healing and leprosy and all of the other stuff but like human and uh individual thought patterns was pretty interesting uh I could talk about Carcass all day. Uh, Black Dahlia Murder, I've kind of been listening to a little bit. Just a little bit, you know? I kind of like them, but I'm not, like, huge into them. Uh, not like Cat or Decap or Bias Murder, like, I really like those guys. I listened to Whitechapel for a little while, but only a few tracks really stood out for me, like the Swords of the Lore and stuff. I, I just didn't really click with them at the same level, you know? I mean, I should stop it here, but I'm just going to do one more race so I can keep talking. I came to like Ghost in the weirdest way possible. A lot of guys don't like Ghost. If you're from the heavier side of metal, you haven't even heard of Ghost. And then every time someone mentions Ghost, they're like, The shit, the Taylor Swift. Uh. And I was like, I came at it from a different genre. I was listening to Carpenter Brute, and then some. I was on Deezer for a little while when I was back in the UK. And it said, you like Carpenter Brute? You should try this song that Carpenter Brute collabed on. I was like, hey, Ghost. Yeah, I never listened to Ghost. Let's give them a try. And it was their latest single, Dance Macabre, but like the Carpenter Brute version. I was like, that's pretty cool. I tried to show it to my mate, and my mate was like, I don't really like electronic shit. And I was like, well, I'll go and listen to the full album, Meteora, isn't it? And I just listened to the full album. What am I doing? I just clicked a button. Does anyone know why I'm here? Where am I? <laughs> Did I just choose another champion? Wait, it's not finished? I was too busy talking about Ghost. Yeah, I came to Ghost on the, the Meteora album and was like, Dance, 
Downs Macabre uh, was drilled into my head from listening to it too much, and See the Light, uh, Life Eternal, oh, that, that album is pretty good for tunes, bangers. Then I went and listened to the old stuff and really fell in love with Square Hammer and, uh, uh, what's it called? The Cerise as well, but that's that that one. Oh, Mummy Dust. And yeah, they've got, they've got a thing going on. It's like, you know, I like them, they're all right. You know, they're just not, they're just not death metal. <laughs> like, you know. Uh, oh, other bands that I listened to recently that are really good. There was a Swedish one that, whose name escapes me right now, fuck. But there's also a metal band that I listened to called Aura Noir, who are really pretty cool. I was having great, I was having great fun with one of their singles. Um, really interesting band. Uh, was it? It wasn't Gorgoroth. Thirteen forty nine, fourteen thirty nine. One of them. I really like that. Uh, I really like their music. Uh, <clears throat> right, watch the Mayhem film Lords of Chaos. Well, it was about Mayhem and uh, Burzum. And then I started listening to Mayhem and I was like, yeah, they're all right. I don't mind them. Oh, an album that I've completely refused to mention. And in general, I saw these guys live a few times. I had a huge crush on the bassist. Is uh, Phonic. Um, which albums did I really like? I picked up the album Mirror of Retribution. It's Mirror of Retribution. It's called Mirror of Something. It's got hands on the front of it and a mirror. Uh, it's a sick album. I just picked it up out of nowhere because it said, Produced by the guitarist from Anfract, Rob Caggiano. And I was like, oh, okay. I'll go and listen to this. He's now in Volbeat now, that guy, by the way. Uh, he quit uh, Anfrax, I think. And I was just like, oh, okay, I'll go look at that. And it was just like, when I first listened to it, I was like, what the hell is this? And, you know, I was just like, okay, I'm going to listen to this. And that really opened me up to Black and Death Metal. Uh, <clears throat> and as a joke, I sent it to one of my mates who was just getting into metal and said, hey, try this out. And he came back and went, I love this shit. And I was like, oh, God, what have I done? <laughs> and like... Uh, that's a really good album, and it really put them on the map for me. It's so fucking heavy. And then the next album came out, or it might not have been the next, next album. It has a picture of a guy stabbing himself in the head with a machete. Uh, it's got, like, songs like Ocean Quake and shit on it. Um, Mahakala and things like that. I've got, an al I've got a t-shirt of Phonic, and it says on the back, Mahakala, guide my will. So it's from that album that we saw them live. And that was good. And then there was the new uh, album with uh, that one, really, I really like that. Broken Jade, it was the lead single, I think, off of that. And, uh, I, yeah, I like that album. And then the next album, really, like, Supreme, yeah, Supreme Pain for the Tyrant. And, uh... No, that wasn't a song, babe. No, meow. The one, the one that really got me was the one where it was speaking, like they had dual vocals and it had them singing like Chinese Mandarin as well. And it was the one at the end. What is that song? What is it called? Uh, so. Demons stand before me like a ghost within a dream. Da, 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 da. Oh, fucking hell, I'm not going to remember this. It's something temple. Oh, fuck. I need to listen to the classic album again because that shit kicked ass. Really good. Really interesting band. Very political. Probably not a band I should be listening to in China because they have very anti Chinese sentiment because they are Taiwanese and they're very much like. Hey, remember that time? Uh, most of their songs about the Singling temp Temple Massacre and shit like that. So it's like, mm, <laughs> maybe don't want to die. 
But no one knows the band, because over here they're like, oh, some sort of band. They, 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 they're they completely censored out of here, so you can walk around with their t-shirt on and everyone's like, I don't fucking know me. <laughs> Yeah, okay, we're gonna stop there for the day. Have some recommendations for metal. Uh, fun fact, Phonic did a cover of Painkiller. Def did a cover of Painkiller. And I didn't really like either of their attempts at Painkiller, but they're both fine. I think I just got sick of hearing Painkiller after a while, you know? It's not my favorite song on that album anymore. Uh, Between the Hammer and the Anvil just fucking kicks ass so much for me that I just love that song so much. Anyway, underrated song, fucking sick. So is Green Man Alishi, which is like a Fleetwood Mac cover. I think it appeared on Defenders of the Faith the first time. I could be wrong. Pretty sick cover that Judas Priest did. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking now. <laughs>